Hi everyone, welcome to the sixth episode of Unlocked. Today's booster pack we're opening is Born of the Gods, which was released in February 2014. Uh, Born of the Gods is the second part of the Theros block. Um, today's community choice we have is Brimos, King of Oriskos, uh, which was from Adam Rollinson. Uh, so let's jump into this one today, guys, and open up this pack. We have Rise of the Challenge. Instant target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike until the end of the turn. Not bad. Uh, enchantment creature, uh, Nyxborn Triton. Uh, you can bestow this onto another creature for plus two, plus three, and of course, if that creature dies, you'll still be left with this enchantment creature. Uh, so bestow cost is five, and natural cast is three. War Chanter of Mogus, uh, using the Inspired um, ability, uh, which is whenever it untaps. For this one, it'll be target creature you control gains Intimidate until end of turn. So that would happen during your upkeep. Forsaken Drifters, uh, when a Forsaken Drifter dies, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. So this would be used for um, dredge decks, so black green, uh, when we're actually wanting a lot of stuff in our graveyard, and then we bring it back as we need it. Revoke Existence, uh, Exile Target Artifact or Enchantment. So with a lot of enchantments during this block, especially in Nyx and Born of the Gods, um, this probably would have been good during Draft and Standard for, at some stage. Oriskos Sun Guide. Uh, also has the Inspired trigger, so I've got some nice low-cost cards in this pack. Um, whenever Oriskos Sun Guide becomes untapped, you gain two life. Why if it's life gain? Uh, Stratus Walk uh, has, um, when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card, gives the enchanted creature flying, and can only block flying creatures. Nullify, favourite of all the control players out there, uh, counter target creature or aura spell. Uh, it does have a double blue cost, but most of the time you're probably running mono blue or enough blue for this not to be a detriment to your deck. And you can counter auras as well, so like Stratus Walk or any other enchantments. Impetuous Sun Chaser, uh, two drop with flying haste and it attacks each turn if able to. Uh, so, good for something just to throw out on the battlefield quick, and it'll keep swinging basically every turn as well. Uh, Necrobite, uh, your target creature gains death touch and you get to regenerate it um, as well. So, good for trying to kill stuff that's a little big and blocking with some of your weenies. Our first uncommon, one of the archetypes from the block. So every every color had its own archetype. For red, we have the archetype of aggression here. Uh, so what it does is it'll give all creatures trample while they're out on the field. So different archetypes obviously give different things based on their color. Um, your opponents also lose trample or can't gain it as well. Um, I'm pretty sure if someone plays an archetype against you, that would nullify this uh, card and then they would have the benefit of trample where you would lose it. Uh, one of our dual color cards, uh, Afara's Enlightenment. Uh, this one is uh, plus one, plus one. When you enchant it onto a creature, it also gains flying. Um, when a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Afara's Enlightenment to its hand, uh, owner's hand. So good for bouncing stuff around um, and putting 1-1 one -one counters as well, so you can keep stacking it around. Uh, probably work quite well with um, some of the more modern decks actually, so bolstering and, and ca uh, counter spams as well. Ah, Siren of the Silent Song, our last uncommon. Uh, so shares the colours with Ashiok as you'll notice, so was used in some people's black blue mill decks during standard at the time. Uh, has the inspired trigger of whenever you untap it, the opponent uh, will mill their top card of their deck into their graveyard. Um, with it being a flyer, it's also used as a blocker for dragons and stuff like that as well to make sure you can keep making your mill happen. So we're hoping for a Brimaz, uh, King of Osricos, Oriskos. That's a hard word to say, I'm glad I don't pull those cards often. So, Herald of Torment, not a bad rare anyway, especially if you like black, which I do. 
uh, can be used as bestowed onto a creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life, but it gives you a 3-3 three, three flyer in the air for three, or it turns something into a flyer with plus three, plus three. So this was used a lot in uh, Mono Black Devotion. You can see it's got your two black mana cost there, so it helps to add to your devotion. And just generally a nice all-round card. So might have a token. We'll see. I've got an island. We do. I've never seen one of these before. Well, at least not pulled one. I'd say one one bird token. Very nice little dove there. Uh, but our rare for this pack was Herald of Torment. Um, thanks for watching today, guys. Our next pack will be Theros. Um, and if you'd like to subscribe, you can follow the journey by subscribing below here on YouTube. Uh, don't forget, we've got an official website, uh, which is mtgunlock.com, where you can help us track down some of the older packs that we're going to be need needing for this series. And we're also on Facebook, so if you'd like to take part in the Community Choice Rare Picks or just talk about what we talk about through the week before we record our episodes, you can find us at facebook.com slash mtgunlocked. We'll see you next time.